Hey guys, so um, I'm gonna unpack my bike. I got back from a race a few weeks ago. It's off season, so I haven't unpacked it yet. I'm gonna unpack it, talk a little bit about what I pack and a little bit about my bike as we go. Okay, so in here I have lots of wheels. I brought three sets of wheels in my la last race. I brought um, a set of rain wheels for racing, a set of racing wheels that if it's not raining um, that I would use. And then I also brought some training wheels. It's got a lot of wheels. Looks like my number's still on my bike. Usually I take that off. <laughs> I gotta take it off. Usually I take it off right away because it's easier to get off, but yeah. And this is my spare. Uh, I travel with this spare toolkit, I guess you could say. So like, you know, if a shifter breaks or my derailleur, I have all that spare stuff um, in here that I travel with. Thankfully, I did not e need to use any of it this year, so. So I always make sure that I wrap this really well, that I wrap the hoods really well, and then back here really well. And then when I travel, I always have, I don't know what you call these brake spa spacers, but to protect those. Okay, so I'm gonna, it's a lot easier when I'm home to build my bike because I just put it up in the bike stand. I'm gonna do that. Would you say you've nailed down packing a bike at this point in your career? No, I like literally every time now I like build my bike, I'm sending pictures to my bike mechanic, Michael Gavigan and Patrick and being like, does this look okay? And you know, thankfully they 98% of the time say yes, but I am not confident that I'm gonna get it right. <laughs> Got all my silk and tools. Okay. What's been the favorite memory on this bike? This year? Oh, that's a great question. Um, favorite memory on this bike? Racing, training. I would say it was probably my first win on this bike, just cause it's been so long since I've had a win. I, I had some pretty cool rides as well though. See, like putting the derailleur on, I'll probably get it wrong since you're uh, filming me. And sometimes I tighten it up too much. So I always gotta like loosen it and then tighten it again. I gotta plug it in. I'm gonna leave that for now and um, a little bit later. So I'm in like, a, I'll be in a training phase coming up. And so um, I'm gonna have Pat show you how I wax my chain. Cause I do, I can build my bike, but I, I don't wax my own chains. So now I'll show you how I, how we do that. Put that on later. And then my wheels, and my training wheels. Oh, Kenny, I feel like I'm having pressure. I actually never put this in on here. I might have to take it out of here to put it on. See, this is content everyone wants. Gwen can't even put her own wheel on. There we go. I want to put this real rear wheel in right now. Pat makes it look so easy when he does it in the stand. No idea if this is the proper way you're supposed to actually build a bike, but he gets it done, right? One of the my favorite things I travel with is a pair of scissors. I use it so much. Oh, look at that when you when you leave it on for so long, it just sticks. Oh, this is awful. Why do they make them so sticky? I feel like you need to cut the camera. This is just like, it's gonna be so tedious. it all off over there. Yeah. Let me see. I mean, why does it need to be this sticky? OK. 
right, so now I'm gonna put on my saddlebag and my frame pump because I'm gonna be training, not racing. I take those things off for racing. Gotta put them back on to train. So these are all my, this is a Silka saddle I, bag. I love it and it has all little multi-tool, some tubes in there. Okay. Pedals are like actually the hardest thing for me to do when I'm packing my bike up. A lot of times I don't have enough strength. But see, I'm actually confused because Pat, last time he put on my, I don't always, when I come home, I usually don't pack my, un, pack my bike, unpack my bike. And last time he put my frame pump on this side, but I think it should go on this side. So hmm, we'll find out if this is a mistake. I feel like I should call him right now. Should I call him? I'm going to call him. Yeah, but why, does it, does it matter where I put my frame pump? Like you switched it from here to here, but I want to put it here. Can I put it here? I want to put it on the front. I can put it on the front. You don't put why, it on the front. But you put it on the back last time. You can mix it up. I mix it up, but today we're going to do the front. Okay. I, I was calling because I didn't want to have up, to. Kenny? Do you like the smell in here? What does it smell like? That's for our, that's the wax for our tutorial. I heard you talk about it a little bit, which I need some explanation. <laughs> we'll get there. Oh man, do I look more buff? You're back from the gym. 45 minutes in the gym. EC Fit Boulder. <laughs> look at that. It started in October, but now we're, we're this close, and so we might as well just finish strong. Right? So are you supposed to deflate the tires when you travel, Patrick? No. They don't, these tires are so wide there's not enough, even if they, if the volume increased, it just would never be enough to blow them off the rim. Is that for all tires or is it specifically? Uh, I would say that's for any tire now above 28 millimeters. Never heard of, I've never even heard of a tire blowing off. Okay, I got it. So. All right, Pat, your turn. I, uh, don't I haven't even got to shower. Well, yeah, but you know, my bike needs to get built. <laughs> We're in time crunch here. Um, yeah, you're going to show everyone how to, how to wax, wax the, chain. the chain. And you know, maybe yeah. I'll watch this video later and learn something. And the importance and the how to and the why and how to make this as simple and easy as possible. I love that. Because I think this kind All of All I know is Pat bought a bunch of I would, did slow I, cookers I went, one I went day. On a I came home and there's like 10 slow cookers in a garage. I do these adventures late at night. And so I was rummaging through thrift stores at 9 p.m. at night looking for slow cookers uh so yeah i got a whole i have a whole system now but he told me we needed it so yeah. all yeah. right we're all good okay so today we're going to wax chains and this is a process that's been around for a very long time and it's really come back to the forefront now in cycling uh people are using it i'd say a lot more than you know traditionally like when i started riding my bike 20 plus years ago so uh but it, this system is not new uh it's just relevant again and so i think the main reason why i enjoy it so much is because we live in such a dry climate here in uh, boulder county that you just you have to lube your chain it seems like every single ride and so now when you wax a chain you're much more likely to get two three four hundred miles out of that chain on top of that this causes way less friction in your drivetrain so normally on a current 12 speed chain for somebody like Gwen, she could get three or 4,000 miles out of a chain because she's much lighter. Somebody like me, it might be 1,800 to 2,500 because I weigh a lot more. With waxing, you can really double or triple those numbers. So now chain rings, which are super expensive, you're buying way less. Chains, which are expensive, you're buying way less. Cassettes, so you can keep, if you take care of your stuff, I mean, unless you're doing like super pro miles, I mean, we're talking years and years out of this equipment now. So. We'll start here with Gwen's bike. She flies uh, without a chain on her bike, just so it's not scratching everything up. So the chain has been removed. And what we'll do now is we'll take it over to the mineral spirits pile where the chain is being completely stripped of all of, you know, any, uh, you know, dirt, anything that was in that chain that was messy. So what we have here, this chain was clipped off. It got put into 
this little plastic container that I have. And then what I put in there is some odorless mineral spirits. And you can just get this at a Lowe's or a Home Depot. I think this thing is like, I don't know, roughly $25. And this has been in my garage all summer. I've waxed a ton of chains and it's still, I don't know, seven eighths full. So that goes into here, chain goes into here. Now I might let this sit for uh, 30 minutes. I might let this sit for a couple days. But now what we do is we just get to the end here and we're really gonna agitate this. So we just wanna shake that as much as possible just to get all of the grit and grime off of it. And then what we'll simply do, we'll reach in and we can grab that chain right there. And you can see that doesn't look, you know, you can tell that that's gonna be, oh, pretty clean here with just a quick little rinse. And so I take that here and we're gonna bring this, I'll wipe down the excess first. Just my little rag. And what I'll do now is I'll just dry this off. And then I could see, you could see Look how shiny that is, just from that quick little rinse I did. And then what I have here to burn the final little bit off in this water bottle right here, I've got denatured alcohol. And this is to burn, to, to finally strip the chain of anything that might be left on it. And now it's important to remember, these chemicals are highly flammable, highly toxic, so keep them high out of reach. I've got two young little wild guys in the house, so keep them out of reach of those. And all I'm gonna do there, same thing. Just give that a final shake. And then what I might do if I can't reach my finger in there, I'll just pluck that out. Give it another wipe. And then you let this air dry. You let this completely air dry out. And where I'll put this, Typically, this is like my little spot right here. I just let that hang. And in the summer, when it's sunny outside, you can just leave that in the sun for 30 minutes and come back and it's bone dry. Okay, so here's that exact same chain, super dry, totally clean. And now what we're gonna do is put it into the wax. So if we come over here, let me say what's up to the little scooter. Um, what I have in here is the Silka wax. And this is just in a crock pot that I got from uh, Goodwill and typically on these crock pots I found high is too hot so I put this on low that's enough to melt the wax and then you know in all, so many of these videos you see these guys do these like fancy uh, ways that they string the chain together and it looks super pretty this is all about just getting it done so I've taken a coat hanger here and I've just positioned it in a way where I'm gonna have a hook later to grab from now remember this is gonna be a metal hook this will be very hot when you pull it out, so have, wear a glove. And then now, see, this is down in the wax. You'd like to agitate the wax, mix it up. All right, so I let that chain sit in the crock pot and stew for roughly 30, 45 minutes for that chain to really, to have all the wax baked in. And now this is what the finished product looks like. This chain now is stiff because all of the wax are in those links. And so what you'll go through now is you'll just go through and you've got to just break break up all these links. And all you're doing is just softening it up. You're just gonna go through and this part's a little tedious. But I think it's important to remember that what I typically do is I'll do three or four chains from the same bike simultaneously. So I would drop three chains into that wax pit normally and then I set them aside and then I'll cycle through. It might take Gwen, I don't know, six weeks or eight weeks to do all three or four chains and then I just clean them all again. So uh, the other thing that I'll do if I can keep track of it, I will do multiple, diff I'll do my mountain bike chain, I'll do a cyclocross chain, I'll do my road bike chain all at once and I just know what each of those chains look like. You just have to know that the chains are cut to specific lengths for each bike. So if you're trying to multitask, you've just got to be kind of organized and you've got to know your stuff. But for, for now, what I would do is um, I would go get, in this case, I would get three 
you know, if I was doing it for my new road bike, I'd get three Shimano chains and I would just wax them all at once and then I'd keep them set aside. And I've got a little bin right here where I've just got them labeled. So I've got 12 speed and 11 speed chains ready to go. And then when I get through them, I just clean them and start the whole process over. So I think there's a lot of people that are nervous or a little intimidated to do the chain waxing, but I actually think it's quite easy. And the biggest thing for me is eliminating the wear and tear uh, that normal like, oil-based lubricants have. And so that's, that's why I'm such a big proponent. And then I think too, I mentioned the dry climate. So what we'll do here now is we'll just get, I think I've got this pretty loose. We'll just put the chain back on. And then the first ride, it'll be ready to go and going should be good for a few weeks. Okay, so now we're gonna put the chain back on. And I don't want this to be a tutorial about how to run a chain through a derailleur, but I'm gonna trust that if you're doing this process that you know how to put and thread a chain through a derailleur. And so I think uh, that will save that for another and different video. I worked at a bike shop, I mean, all in probably just for like 10 years. Well, maybe, yeah, probably 10 years. Um, and that was all I had, that's all I did and knew. Uh, but I mean, that's already been 10 years and bikes have changed so much. So yeah, it's crazy. So yeah, the old stuff I can do in my sleep. And so you can hear right now that it's a little bit loud. That's totally fine. That derailleur. You could tell the chain's still just a little bit tight. So I'll just, what I'll do is I'll just keep going through here and making sure all the links are broken up before I go and ride it for the first time. But that noise, that doesn't concern me. That'll go away in five miles. So yeah, I'll just go through and on here, break it up and away you go. So check it out, do it at home yourself, get it sorted. Thanks, Kenny. Thank you. Are you open for business? Do people pop by? No, don't call me. I'm not waxing chains. I got, I got two kids. I got a job. I got a wife. I'm not waxing anybody else's chains. I'm happy to call you, walk you through it for five minutes, but I'm most likely just going to direct you back to this video.